It's a custom that dates back to the 1860s, playing the song First Call to let spectators know a horse race is about to start. But a local musician is keeping that practice alive at a local racetrack. In tonight's Maury Stories, Maury Glover shows us the man behind Canterbury Park's signature sound. It's race day at Canterbury Park, and visitors are betting on having a good time. Those low lows laughter and crocodile tears take off. But a fan favorite is helping preserve a racing tradition as iconic as the winner's circle. Left in the wake of a keen turn of speed. Or a photo finish. Tears. Who wins by five? It's an opportunity for me to perform, and it just gives me a great feeling to put a little smile on people's faces out here. Lynn Dykert has been the main bugler at the track for nearly three decades. And over the years, he's become almost as much of a fixture as the horses and jockeys themselves. Thank you. Thank you. I finish the call, and any number of times people will ask, and they want to, they want to take pictures. They just want to talk. They want to ask about the, the, the tradition of the call. Um, how did I get this job? Four days a week, Dykert puts on his signature red jacket and black hat and plays call to the post a few minutes before every race. It signifies that the horses have hit the track and they're just minutes away from the gates. Followed by whatever rouser or ringer he decides to tack on the end. When I'm out there, I'm on. It's, you know, it's showtime. It's showtime. Between races, he still practices in his office to make sure he has hot chops when it's time to perform. I'm ready to go. I still get nervous every time I go out there. Absolutely. But I think that's probably what keeps me young and keeps me motivated to practice and, and, and just keep, it, uh, uh, keep perfecting. Every day is different. While most people know him as the bugler at Canterbury, Dykert is a professional musician who's carved out a career playing a number of permanent contract gigs around the Twin Cities. He tickles the ivories in the morning and over the lunch hour at a pair of office buildings in the western suburbs Monday through Friday, adding a touch of class to the corporate culture he has never worked in himself. I've never had an office job, and I just, I could not sit still in a, in a small cubicle or do something like that. And if I did, I would be singing. I'd bring my horn to the office, and i you know, wake people up a little bit and shake it up a bit. I would probably do that. Dykert also has a jazz trio that performs at Canterbury eight or nine times a summer for special occasions. On top of that, he runs a company that provides musicians for corporate gigs and private events and is an adjunct trumpet professor at Carleton College. Uh, I'm just so impassioned with doing what I'm doing, performing, and creating something that maybe a lot of people aren't able to do. While well, most racetracks play a recorded version of Call to the Post, announcer Paul Allen, who came up with Dykert's nickname, Sir Leonard Dykert, says a live bugler adds some pageantry with a personal touch. The fact that he's so kind and the fact that he engages with fans and takes pictures and plays the little ditties, People just love him, and, and I love him too. Dykert isn't usually one to toot his own horn, but as long as he's healthy, he doesn't see a finish line in sight. It's not a job, it's a passion. I like to think I bring something special here, and so I can see myself for any number of years. For Maury Stories, Maury Glover, Box 9. Wow.